March 31st, 2023. This is the 2000 tick chart on the S&P 500 eFutures Mini on the Thinkorswim platform. Uh, just go down to the descriptions below if you want to see where I thought I saw setups as well as where I took my trades. It was a pretty, pretty much a bullish day today. It's got a bullish rally. You can see in the pre-market, did chop around a little bit. Didn't really form a very good trading range structure and it just kind of created this big channel. So this is how I drew out my charts today. I took three trades. One was a winner, one was break even, and then one was red. The break even trade actually should have been a winner, but I got spooked and exited my trade early, which is kind of breaking the rules because if I wasn't sure about it, I shouldn't have entered the trade in the first place. In other words, I should have just left the stops or the limit orders in place and just waited till one of them hit. Now the volume was actually quite low because let me just kind of show you something that I drew for myself. This is a uh, kind of from seven o'clock to eight o'clock, then eight o'clock to nine, nine to 10, 10 to 11, and then 11 to 12. And then from here all the way over to one o'clock is should be another really long bar. So you can tell that in the beginning, the prices were kind of really, really slow. There wasn't much volume going on. Then right here, probably around 1230, this is when a whole lot of volume and trading just kind of came in pretty much during the last hour. Because if you just look at the size of this can, not candle, but this uh, size of this one hour block, look how many 2000 tick candles are in here. It's like uh, pretty much engulfing the last four hours of trading. That's where a lot of the volume was. So I thought just, I just drew this for myself, thought it was kind of interesting, but I'm gonna go into the trades. There weren't too many. Because if you didn't get on right away, then you kind of missed out on a lot of the moves. And then afterwards, price action was pretty slow in that the candles were tiny, but they were all grinding up. So it was hard to find a good entry to take, well, to take a, a trade on. So let's just go into the trades now. This is a pre-market. Oh, before I uh, go into that too much, just want to show, I found this large trading range kind of this guy early on when I actually had a couple of ticks and actually in the beginning started it down here thinking, okay, well maybe it looks something like this. But then uh, once it got over here, it didn't fit that well. And I also had smaller ones going on like here and here, but they kind of didn't fit all that well. And the, the best one that I could find for most of the day was this one. And I just cut through, I like the, you know, three touches here. I just, this is a news event. And then it kind of touched pretty well, confirmed here all the way up. Then when it broke out and stayed outside, I looked for another one, which ended up being this guy. And I took it from the bottom and then just contacted these. And then this one at the top and then this one at the top here. But this big one doesn't really help that much until you're toward the end of the day. So I focused mainly on this one. So I'm just going to go ahead and just kind of hide this guy for now. Or I'm just going to put him as a dotted line just so it's easier to see. And then I'll put him back later. So this is what prices look like in the beginning of the day. It was just kind of choppy, not much volume. Prices started going up. Now, right here at this point, I don't know that it's going to trend and be a bullish day because I still was playing off of this potential trading range off the lows in the pre-market and the highs in the pre-market. But it started violating it and it started staying outside. The first uh, setup that I saw happened right around here. This is a new high. There's a first entry long and then a second entry long. Now this is a pretty good signal bar for the second entry long. And then I thought maybe it's a potential fail second entry short because you could take this as a new low because technically there would be like, well, depending on where you took it, I just, if you start in the regular hours, it'd be first, there's a new low, goes up, this is your first entry short, second entry short, the count resets. And this one's actually lower than that one. So you can say first entry short, second entry short again. But I saw it as kind of a larger visual I saw it was like a first entry short and then a second entry short, or you could stay from here, first entry short, second entry short. In any case, I was mainly playing, thinking that's a second entry long and a potential fail second entry short. But I decided that I didn't really want to take the trade just because this is already kind of getting toward the high of day at this time and point, at this point in the day. So it's already kind of pressing up. And even though the EMA is supporting it, I wasn't too clear on what I was seeing. So I just kind of skipped it because I thought it might have been a risky trade. Turns out it would have worked, but if you held on for too many points, then you would have gotten stopped out probably on this candle. 
It goes into this trading range. It's just kind of jumping back and forth. I don't really see any good setups. This trading range is actually not that large. It's like about 98 to, it's only about three points big. So to get a two point scalp or a one point scout, you're really, really pressing for it. So I didn't really think there was any good potential trades there. So I just kind of left it alone. And then the first trade that I took is right here. I saw this is a new low. And I said, okay, it's a first entry short, second entry short. But then I thought, okay, maybe it's actually a larger one leg up, pull back a second leg up. So I kind of counted these together. So I saw, thought this is maybe a first entry short, second entry short. And I grouped all these together as a new low since I'm looking at a bigger picture. And that's where I took my trade. It ends up being break even because I had my stop right below these two candles. But then as prices kind of shot up, I thought, okay, this is so far so good. I, I saw that it might be struggling because it might be getting toward the high of the day. And before I made my scalp, I went ahead and dragged my stop right up to where my entry was, plus one tick. And it stops me out right here because my stop was going to be right here, which it should have been actually one tick below here. And then I should have waited until I got my exit. So I got stopped out, uh, break even, which shouldn't have, if I just waited for this candle, then I would have gotten my scalp. But as I said, I broke my own rules, which is, you know, you have to either wait for the limit or the stop to hit. Because if you start nicking and mousing around with your stops or your limit, well, the limit's a little okay if you see it's about to fail, but the stops, technically, you should just kind of leave it in place. Otherwise, you shouldn't have entered the trade in the first place. And so that's kind of where I got my break-even trade. And then this is where I kind of call it a no-reason trade. So I was chasing this move because when I got stopped out here on this candle and it went back up, I said, well, I'm getting in. So I just entered right here. And that's a pretty bad idea because you see it goes up. And then I, I didn't just take a scalp of one point. It came back reversed and took me out right there. So this is a, uh, a foolish trade that I shouldn't have taken at all. So you can see where I took, so this guy's my visual second entry long, which is second and failed second entry short, which is about 4104, which is about right here. And then, as I said, when it went up, I got wigged out and moved my stop here where I should have just left it and this candle would have filled me. But uh, that was bad. And then this one was just a no reason trade where I was chasing, got emotional, entered, and then got stopped out. So... Right now, the scoreboard is like one break even and one losing trade. And then I did see this, but I wasn't, I wasn't uh, present enough to catch it in time because there's like the triple test here. And this looks like it's a pretty good reversal, especially when this bar kind of went down and closed. Then I was watching it and paying attention. And then when it went up above, I thought this might actually be a trade here because it's a pretty strong bullish day at this point, kind of indicating. And I thought maybe there was a trade here. I didn't take it though, because even though it made kind of a nice double top here and it kind of closed a little bit high, it never broke above this guy. And plus the EMA is right here. And previously EMA was giving a little bit of trouble, but now it's supporting. So here I wasn't too clear on what to do. So, and then when this one closed, I thought it was too late to try to take this trade because it was kind of coming into this potential midline. This midline was actually a little bit lower because I actually had this guy slightly lower here. But in any case, it was right at the midline, so I wasn't sure what to do, so I did nothing. And then prices came, went up, confirmed the top of this trading range. Actually, it violated it because I had my trading range top right here, and then I dragged it up to here to kind of make sure I don't have an overshoot yet. Then it came down. I saw a potential failed second entry short. So I saw this is a new low. It's confirming. It becomes a first entry short, a second entry short. This candle isn't the best. But then I just saw, okay, well, this is closing pretty bullish on a pretty bullish day. So this is a bullish, but it's a technically a red candle. So I said, if it breaks up above, I'm going to have my order ready. Ready. It breaks up, and I said, okay, you know, and it also closed above. I thought, okay, I'm going to enter this trade. And I was able to enter, even though I know it's kind of close to the top of this trading range. It ends up working for me, and I will admit that this is probably not the cleanest setup, and I was taking a risk because it is getting toward the high, but I, I like the fact that the EMA is kind of holding prices now, and it is on top of the midline, but yes, I will say that this is probably not the wisest decision. I probably should have waited for maybe this lower high, but this lower high closed kind of uh, bearish, and if I waited for this lower high, I'm not so sure that I would have taken the trade if I didn't take the trade already. 
So this is what I would have saw, lower high, and then the next candle here, it didn't break over. So I'd be questioning whether this top of this trading range is a true resistance that's giving price action trouble. And then it turns out working. So I will admit that it was kind of a lucky, I was lucky to have gotten that. And I was also lucky to get a runner on that. So after this kind of emotional trading right here, this in the span of about 30 minutes, I said, you know what? I'm in the green. I need to just step back, be a little careful because yesterday I was in the red. I just need to be calm and not kind of push things and uh, wait for a really good setup when it comes back to the EMA. Unfortunately, as price action keeps going, you're going to see, I did see an entry here, a potential entry, another failed second entry short because I saw, okay, if this is a new low, first entry short, second entry short, I also saw this as potentially a new high, first entry long. This is technically where the second entry long is, but I also like that second entry long if you group together one leg down, two legs down. So this is actually, I guess, a visual second entry long, first entry long, second entry long. But I wasn't, uh, I just didn't see it in time to see it, uh, to take that trade. So I thought it was a possible trade because it's bouncing off the EMA. It's bouncing off this midline of this larger trend channel that I had drawn and everything was looking pretty good. And I thought there was enough room to get to the top, but I didn't take that trade. So it kind of breaks out. It goes through this channel. I saw two measured legs going up. This is getting a little sketchy right now. Prices are slowing. Price action is slowing down for sure. And it became kind of a wait and sit on hands. I saw this as a potential overshoot of this trading range. So I thought maybe I'll make it back to the bottom. It kind of makes it back bounces. I don't really see a good clean ent entry breaks through. And unfortunately, you know, it breaks out and it comes back up. You can see there's probably one leg down and a second leg down, but this was kind of not very clean for me to feel comfortable taking a trade. And then prices just keep, continue moving up. And right now price action is pretty slow. And once I saw that this was being violated, this was violating the price action. I was just wondering if there was a larger trading range I didn't see. As you can see, when it comes down and bounces again, then I said, okay, there's at least two touches here. So I actually drew this to here and I extended it all the way back to here. So it wasn't clean. So then I started over and I said, maybe it's here and maybe it touches here and it touches here. Then that would make this high touch at least twice. It'd be a little bit better than this highlighted blue one. So that's kind of where I had like, okay, maybe there's a very large bullish rally going on, but I'm not sure if this one, this one was in play for sure. And I wasn't sure if this one's now in play. So I kind of drew out this dotted one now and I just continued watching and I did see like a first entry short, second entry short, and I saw another failed second entry short. Today it seemed like there was a lot of failed second entry shorts and this one looked like it set up pretty nicely because it's a new low first entry short, second entry short, but I'd have to base it off of this trend channel, which only confirmed, which confirmed three times now. So it's still valid, but this one didn't come down and touch, but it was holding the EMA. So I thought, well, it does look a little congested and I'm not 100% sure because the price action previously was going above the EMA holding, but now it's below the EMA and the EMA is holding it down. Then it came back above and it came back down. So I thought it was a little bit of a roller coaster, but I thought if there was a trade here, I'm not really sure I would have taken it. Maybe if it broke down here a little lower, I felt a little more comfortable before you know it went back up. Turns out if I did take this trade, I'm very sure I would have got stopped out probably before I got my scalp because I would have probably put my entry here and there's only five ticks and I need at least six ticks to get out. But then my stop would have been one tick below here and this candle, this red candle would have stopped me out. So I, for whatever reason, I mean, not whatever reason, but I didn't feel comfortable with that trade. And I guess that kind of saved me in this case. Then prices continue moving up and it's kind of ent entering the last hour. This is where you start getting a ton of candles and even though there's a ton of candles, I didn't really see a good clean entry because you can say, okay, there's a new high, first entry long, second entry long. But so far from the EMA, I don't like this. And then it breaks a new high here, first entry long, and that's all you get. And then maybe you say there's a new low, first entry short, you get a second entry short here. And if you want to count a second entry short failure, it's pretty far from the EMA. So that just didn't give me warm fuzzies. And then price action just kind of goes down, chops a little bit more all the way into the close. So as I said, uh, I didn't see or find, well, with my skill level, I didn't see that many clean setups today. Uh, this is uh, this break even trade. Actually, this this trade, I should have just kind of like, well, pretty much left it alone because it wasn't it wasn't really a thought out trade. And uh, this one, I should have. This is my break even trade, the first trade. I should have left it alone, left my stop alone. I would have had one green trade, and then this is the second green trade. 
And then this one wouldn't have canceled out this guy. So let's talk salt today. This is the last day of March, last day of the first quarter. So I thought there was going to be a lot more volatility, but that volatility didn't really come in for the first, I don't know, five hours. Because this is one hour little lines measuring how long, how many you know potential 2000 tick charts, tick candles there are. You can see it's from here. And then this last hour from 12 o'clock to about one o'clock Pacific Standard, there was like a lot of candles being printed here. Unfortunately, this didn't happen earlier in the day because toward the end of the day, I'm also more weary of trying to take trades. Because if you look at here, this is at 1245. This is 15 minutes of real time. And you can see how many candles printed. And then you can see that this is a whole hour of previous trading time. So you can tell in the last 15 minutes, it you know pretty much was more activity than these last four hours individually so it's kind of how i saw the charts today uh definitely because i remember moving my stop yesterday on a break even trade and i shouldn't have and that would have worked out as well so i just kind of have to hammer home the idea that i need to trust the trade or i shouldn't have taken it in the first place so hopefully that was helpful